we are about two minutes early. Oh, I got to check and see if this is coming through. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's done that before. It's just I keep wondering, you know, it's it's a certain beep, and I I can't place where it's at. You know, it's like I'm half asleep or something, and then I'm thinking about it. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> what's that from? Um, play this so I can hear it. Yeah, I was uh, <clears throat> I was talking to the cigar guys uh, out in the garage and having a cigar and had my computer out there and and had my headphones on and it beeped at me and I didn't think anything of it because it, you know it makes noises when things come in and all that so mm-hmm. I didn't think anything of it and uh, one minute until showtime. All of a sudden they were gone. And I'm going, what's going on? And I look down, <laughs> battery went down to zero. I never, oh, uh, I've always got it plugged in. I never realized that, that uh, you know, I run out that fast. Didn't even last an hour unplugged, which is really a short time. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. but yeah. Uh, it uh, it warned me though, and I didn't understand what the warning was, and so. I know there's a way to to plug it in to the computer with the USB port, and it'll shut the computer off. But I I just haven't run the run it up or you know had it set up or anything, so I just leave it off. I figured, eh, if I'm home, I'll turn it off if I can think about it. But uh, well, we're coming up on uh, ten seconds. I think ten seconds. Okay, yeah. Five seconds. Yeah. Off. Your show. Hmm. Your show five. will go live in oh, five seconds. Five. Four. Jeez, Three, two, off. one. Oh. Blog Talk Radio. Go. This is all about it wine. The talk show dedicated wine. to the wine industry since 2009. Featuring winemaker, cellar master, vineyardist, and tasting expert, Ron. Basically, what we're trying to do on this program is just trying to educate people and trying to make wine less confusing and more friendly. From coast to coast and around the world. You know, we really have had some some neat people on the program. I, I just, I love that. Post your questions and comments during the live show on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash All About Wine BTR. Again, wine. that's www.facebook.com forward slash All About Wine BTR. And now, All About Wine is on. All about Here's Ron. Oh, there we go. And yet another week has yeah. passed, and we are back again. Yeah, here we are. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, it is. June the 22nd, 2023, it's 7.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So if you're listening to us on the East Coast, it's 7.01. If you're listening to us in the Midwest and Central, it's 6.01. If you listen to us on the Mountain Time Zone, Mountain Daylight Time, it is 5.01. And on the West Coast, the Left Coast, as it's referred to for... Uh, people who are cool um it is 702 oh it's a minute later uh 702 pacific daylight time it's 702 pacific Mm -hmm. time you mean 402 did i say seven yes i did no 402 (laughs) 402 (laughs) yeah three whole hours difference yeah Yeah. Yeah, I was doing so well, too, until I got to that one. Then I started talking too much. Itemized list of uh, the uh, time zones. I I don't think we've done that, or at least we haven't in a while, so very Mm. cool. Uh, Yeah, you're right. It's it's something that, you know, we usually just say it's 7 and 2 Eastern Day at a time and let it go with that, let people do their own math. But we helped you out tonight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) we have a guest tonight. She should be calling in uh, at least, in fact, I apologize because I was telling you the wrong guest last week. I was telling you that we were going to have a guest from Far Ninth Winery, and 
that's not yet. At least Lobenworth from Somsation is our guest tonight, and she's supposed to be calling in. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here and be sure that... Uh, Check your notes. No worries, and we'll do, so... Uh, oh... Hmm. Boy, it's been a it's been a couple of weeks since I last talked to Nick, who is the one who's supposed to be doing this, and all the information, everything has been sent, and well, you know I should have followed up with an update. Yeah, we'll give her a, give three her a, new messages. She, she could be waiting until it's uh, seven o'clock her time. <laughs> Yes, that could be because she's probably on. No, well, she might be on this coast too. Be, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh boy, I just got it here. It just came in. Okay. Oh, this is horrible. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. I I opened up back to the email, and I've been looking at this for the last couple of three hours here, and mm. in fact, I sent it to you and everything else. Mm-hmm. And then an hour ago at 513, which I didn't look at it then, it says, I'm so sorry. we." It didn't pop up until just now because oh. down at the bottom it said three new messages. Okay. It says, I'm so sorry. We, uh, so sorry. Can we reschedule it at least, at least the interview? She's pretty sick and can't do the interview. I'm Ooh. so sorry to ruin your show two hours before showtime. Yeah. And then she, he came back in. Did you see my previous email? These can't do it. And reason night, she is sick. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, no, that's, you know, it's understandable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, people do get sick, you know. Let me send a quick one back to him, and then I will scramble and see what I can find to talk about tonight. I mean, you know, when I... <laughs> when I have a guest, I don't prepare stuff and well we'll be uh, so let's see. we'll be able to find stuff to talk about uh okay let me send this back to the uh hey nick uh so sorry that this is <clears throat> oh uh, let me know when she would like to be on, and we will get her. I'm not one of those typers that go, you know, I just, <laughs> I use four fingers and that's it. Wow. Uh, I've, I've seen people use two and it's just their index fingers. Um, so that's. Yeah, that's, I use four. I use my index and my middle fingers on my two, wow. on both hands. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, hmm. I, I'm, you know, Two fifths of the way, or, or four tenths of the way, there using mm-hmm. my whole hand, but still, I only use four. So, mm-hmm. uh, talks. Let's see. Talks. Uh, I was trying to find something to time being here, but I don't see. Uh, On. Okay. Uh, yeah, I. And that's funny because I've been looking at those emails and stuff, and yeah. I just now clicked on the email again, and a little box on the corner said three unread messages. And so I clicked on that, and that's when they popped up. So that's why I didn't see them earlier. For some reason, they were hidden yeah. down there. Hmm. Oh, well. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's see what have we got that we can talk about here. Mm, let's see, not that. That's not something that is. Show. Let's see. Uh, 
Food and Wine. That's a magazine. Nope. I, Let's see if I can play. Uh, if I can play something here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I could have popped that in, I suppose. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Well, let me. I made some notes of other stuff that I have uh, saved, and let's see if this is stuff that I've got here. Well, if I'd known this if that had came up sooner, I would have. Oh, that's my note. Yes, I got to get a hold of those guys who did that. Uh, did that seminar that I was telling you about. I got the email, and I'm going to have to TerraVox, is it? I'm going to have to get them and contact them and see if I can't get them on the show. And I, I want to talk with them before I uh, post this all this information up on the, uh, uh, the website. I want to talk to them and see if they can't be on the show and give them a chance just to talk. Uh, okay, here, let me find some stuff here. Here's something. Spotted lanternflies. Ooh, the dreaded spotted lanternfly. There's all sorts of books. I just, it's it's horrible. It really is horrible that there's so many different books out there. I don't know. Did I say something about this? Uh But, uh, yeah, I think I might have talked about this. The spotted lanternfly, uh, I think I might have said something about this, uh, is starting to starting to move. It's in, it's in Virginia, uh, and it has been found, they have found some of them as far as Sonoma in California, although they are not thinking it's an infestation, but they are concerned that it's that they're even found then, obviously. Uh, what sets it apart is just not that it's damaging fruit, but the vines themselves. It's uh, like the uh, uh, Pierce disease and uh, uh, the uh, Oh, geez. That's terrible. I can't even get a blank now. Uh, Pierce disease and uh, the glass wing sharpshooter. Uh, the glass wing sharpshooter gets in and it infects it with Pierce disease and it kills the grapevines. And the spotted lantern fly does the same. It will kill the grapevines. And, you know, you can do all sorts of treatment stuff for other types of bugs and different things. But when they kill the grapevines, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. And the thing with it is that it uh, is a four-cycle uh, lifespan. And since it's a four-cycle lifespan, it is... And you're unable to kill it just with one spring. That's the same thing with uh, uh, the glass wing sharpshooter. It's a four cycle lifespan, and you have the nymph or the egg, the nymph, the uh, uh, egg, larva, nymph, and adult. And the spotted lantern fly, I believe, goes through the four cycle also. The egg larva, nymph, and adult. And because they go through four cycles, you can't just spray for one cycle because the if you spray for the larva and the adult, then the egg and the nymph are not affected. And if you spray for those and treat for those, then you see it skips the larva and the adult, or the uh, nymph and the adult. So it's... Uh, it's tough on these bugs to try to get something that's going to be able to spray for everything. Uh, so the uh, spotted lantern flies in uh, the four stages is 
starting to really work its way around the country in areas it's almost completely overtaken Pennsylvania. It's really gotten bad there. And they're saying now when you see one step on it, don't do anything other than just, just step on it. Just kill it because it could continue to be uh, producing and stuff like that. And so it don't try to do anything else but just to step on it. Uh, they excrete a honeydew or sugary liquid that causes crops to mold. And this is a, a big threat to not only wineries, but to breweries uh, all over, and, and including uh, right now in the Washington, D.C. region. So it's uh, becoming a problem. It's, uh, I, I think I first talked about this a couple of years ago, if not more. And it's still out there and it's still getting worse and worse. So... Uh, egg masses are all over. Check for those. Uh, if you are, well, if you're growing even fruit trees in your own yard or anything like that, check on the bottom of the leaves for egg masses and report it to your local um, extension center if you do find egg masses. But the spotted lanternfly, uh, it's really... Uh, getting worse, getting worse. Pretty bug though. I don't know. I can I. Uh, copy image. Okay, I copy the image, and let's see if I can put the image into. Oh, I don't want that. I went to the wrong one. Uh, Facebook. And I want to switch over to All About Wine. And then I want to I'm switching to All About Wine. And let's see if I can put this on there. Uh, print. Loading preview. Well, it's not going to do it. Oh, well. I was hopefully going to be able to jump in and just put a picture, a big picture of the glass wing or the uh, spotted lantern fly on there for you, but it's not working. So, uh, no, that's not going to do it. Oh, well, okay. Uh, it was a good thought. I'll see if I can't do it out to show and play with it more instead of just doing it while you're sitting here listening to me. Uh, okay, what is something else here? Uh, 16 hybrid wine grapes you should know about. This was a blog I saw, which was an interesting little blog. Uh, these are hybrid grapes uh, that have been bred for cold weather climates in four different areas. Uh, for uh, growing in, in extreme cold weather. Uh, first one here is the Marquette, M-A-R-Q-U-E-T-T-E. -E. You can find these grapes, too, especially if you live up in the north, uh, northern areas. Uh, these are readily available up there. If you don't live in the northern areas, look for them where you are. These are, I've had some of these before, and these are pretty interesting grapes, Uh could be grapes of the future if the climate change continues to affect the grapes that we know as we know them. Um, but the market particularly grows well in the colder climates. Uh, it is the grandson of the Pinot Noir. Uh, it's uh, a hybrid of a Pinot Noir. So uh, M-A-R-Q-U-E-T-T-E, -E -E, Marquette. Uh, notes of red and black cherry and sometimes a hint of spice. 
And it says some winemakers tried aging it with oak, which it seems to stand up to the oak well. And when it's been oaked, it gives you tobacco leather notes that come forth. And let's see, if you're already a fan of Pinot Noir, you'll probably enjoy the Marquette. Next one, Vidal Blanc. This is uh, another one introduced before climate change was an issue. And uh, it was created for the production of cognac back in 1930s. Uh, it's not in France anymore. It's a uh, non-accepted wine for production these days in France. Uh, <laughs> they made it, and they said, we don't want that anymore. Uh, it is just, uh, you won't find it in France, but it's in North America. Uh, the U.S. has a plant in northern states like New York, Michigan, Rhode Island, and all around Canada. And it's used in production of sweet wines. A lot of ice wines are made with the Vidal Blanc. Um, it uh, can be made and used into a dry white wine, though. You've probably seen the Vidal Blanc. It's, it's been around for quite some time. Next one, Frontenac. F-R-O-N-T-E-N-A-C. Uh, that's another University of Minnesota's inventions, and this was introduced in 1996. Uh, it, this is the first grapes that prompted the northern states to experiment with hybrids, and this is like Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan all started planting the Frontenac with uh, Frontenac with positive results, and uh, it is booming um, black cold hardy grape that that can be grown in cold temperatures uh, and uh, it uh, is uh, let's see what's this line is is a black cold hardy grape that can be grown in lower temperatures than the vast majority of black vitus vinifera grapes so that's a good thing for it quite acidic with low tannins and it's used in different styles from dry reds, which are often oak, to rosés. And it's also used quite a bit in port, a sweet red wine that originally hails from Portugal. Yeah, people know that. Another one, Norton. We talked about Norton a lot. Norton is a very popular grape in, uh, in America this year. Uh, it's a hybrid, but it's the oldest known American native hybrid. Uh, after Europeans came over to America, they wanted to make sure they had plenty of wine to drink. So they started to scramble and search for an American wine grape. And Norton, which was cultivated in Virginia, was the result of that. And it says some of the hybrid grapes have less than favorable reputation among wine lovers. Norton is considered to be one of the best of the bunch. Uh, it mimics a lot of the black grape varieties grown in Europe. Uh, wines made with Norton can be medium or full-bodied and typically display notes of red fruit like strawberries, red cherries, and raspberries. And you'll find plantings of Norton in Texas, Missouri, Kansas, and Virginia, where it originally came from. Uh, what is the other name? Gee, I was, see, I wasn't prepared for this. I usually look up this stuff. The other name for Norton. I can't think of it right now. Um, which you'll see it coming out of Virginia. But Norton is made in sweet styles. It's made in dry styles. Uh, I've seen port made out of Norton grape. It's actually being grown here in Florida. There's a good friend of mine who has a winery uh, here in Pasco County that grows in Norton. Last time I talked to him, he was still uh, harvesting in Norton and making a Norton. So it, it surprisingly is surviving here in Florida with Pierce disease. It's not being affected by Pierce disease. So uh, Norton, if you haven't tried it, then by all means, that's one you really should pick up. They are usually just about everywhere. Okay. Uh, Next one we have for you is Saval Blanc. 
That's S-E-Y-V-A-L, Sauvignon Blanc. And it was named after the horticulturist Bertel Sauvay and his father-in-law, Victor Villard, who created it. Uh, it's a green skin, and it makes a white wine. And the grape is used uh, a, a lot up in uh, used in, in England, where it's blended with other grapes to make sparkling wine. And <laughs> at one time, we almost interviewed some champagne makers in, in England, and then we lost connections, and we got cut off, and our uh, illustrious Block Talk Radio wouldn't let me in one morning, and, and, and so and we never did connect back up with them, which is a shame. I guess I can see if I can't find their email address and see if we can't talk to them now. But, uh, you know, I rant on about something here. Uh, it's uh, Because of its early ripening tendencies, it does well in the colder climates uh, because uh, it, because it uh, you don't have to worry about it being hit by the uh, frost or something. It uh, ripens early and you can pick it. Unfortunately, the European Union is not a permitted winemaking variety. Yeah, that's what they do. Uh, the European Union has certain varieties that are permitted and not permitted over there. And uh, sad to say, the Saval Blanc is not one. Uh, so they can't make any wines out of it. But England, not being a member of the EU anymore, can do it. Uh, Saval Blanc is compared to Chardonnay. Uh, a lot of the same flavor profiles, a lot of high acid in Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, the Sauvignon Blanc also takes well to the malolactic fermentation, which rounds out the flavors, gives you that butteriness in your Chardonnay. Well, Sauvignon Blanc can do that, give you more balanced acid uh, if, if they're doing that. Um, so, Sauvignon Blanc, it's, it's been around for a while, but uh, not, I haven't, well, I haven't looked for one. I can't say I haven't seen one. I just haven't looked for one. A lot of these grapes, if you look for them, you can find them. Traminette, T-R-A-M-I-N-E-T-T-E, Traminette. Uh, the Gewürztraminer is a favorite for those who love aromatic white wines, but if you're looking for wine made from hybrid grapes that have similar qualities, try the Traminette. This was cultivated at the University of Illinois back in 1965. Uh, so it's it's been around for quite a few years, what, 50? Uh, I don't know, too hard to do the math in my head. Uh, meaning you may pick up some floral, tropical accents with melon and uh, flavors, uh, and you'll get that also with Traminette. Uh, also, the Traminette has little hints of spice in it as well, as the Gewurz, uh sometimes gets you little, little bits of spice, but not often. Uh, the uh, Traminette can be made dry or sweet, and uh, sometimes it's used in the production of sparkling wines. Uh, so uh, it's nice wine. I've had Tremonet, and it's uh, I'm impressed with it. It's really a pretty nice wine. The off-dried Tremonets can give you just a subtle hint of sweetness to it, something that's really pleasant. It's not, not overpowering, not real, you know, ooh, that's sweet, but just a, just a subtle hint of sweetness to it. Uh, it was originally meant to be a table grape, and uh, those grapes that weren't ate were turned into wine. And soon the winemakers just said, yeah, oh, no more table grape on this. We're just going to use it for a wine grape. And so it quit being used for a table grape. I've never had a chance to eat a Tramonette when it was ready to be picked. <laughs> Chamborson. 
Chamborson is really pretty popular. You can find Chamborson throughout the northern climates. These, these are very popular wine here. Um, there's a hybrid. Uh, a black grape used to make red wine. It hails originally from France, but you'll more likely see it in the U.S. and Australia than anywhere else. Uh, it's uh, black fruit characteristics and a, a vegetative aroma, uh, vegetal aroma. In the U.S., it's common for when we use these grapes in areas where black grapes can't grow. And in Australia, uh, it's often blended with Syrahs, where it provides a deeper color to the wine. Uh, <laughs> the Syrah is decidedly not a dark color, so this is added. If you do taste the Chamborson in France, you're probably going to be from the Loire, and it's likely to be included in a blend for table wine, since the grape is not approved to create high-quality wines. Again, EU does not improve it for high-quality, so... But it's it's a decent wine. Um, again, it's another one of those hybrids that you really should give a try. Uh, Kayuga, C A Y U G A, Kayuga. Uh, New York Finger Lakes. If you live in that area, or if you've ever been to that area, or if you can buy wine from New York, you're going to see a Kayuga in the stack of wines you can buy. It's a cool weather grape. Uh, one of his parents is the Saval Blanc. And so it's a, uh, uh, the Kayoga is one of the more accepted hybrid varieties out there uh, because it comes from a highly regarded lineage, uh, if you will, the Seville Blanc. Uh, it's a pretty versatile grape, too. It makes a wide variety of white wines uh, from dry white wines and also used a lot in sparkling wines and also sweet wines. Uh, the uh, sweet wines of the Cuyahoga actually come quite often from leaving it on the vine and making an ice wine out of it, letting it stay on the wine and shovel up and become uh, concentrated in the sugars, and then they uh, make a sweet wine out of it. But uh, Cuyahoga, I ha full disclosure, I'm not a fan of Cuyahoga. I, I just never, never have been. It's got a little foxiness to the taste that I've just never really been a big fan of, but that doesn't mean that you might not like it. Next one is Cabernet Dor. Uh, Cabernet C-A-B-E-R-N-E-T Dor. D-O-R-E with a little mark above the E. Uh, it's not a widely planted hybrid, but it says here in this article, if you get a chance, uh, you should try it. Uh, many compare it to the Sauvignon Blanc because it produces a, a light, aromatic, high acid wine. And they, they say that the two of them taste similar because the parents are both from Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, and that's the one that made the Sauvignon Blanc grape, and that made the Cabernet Dior grape. So, uh, with that parentage, then maybe it's really good. I've never, never had it. I can't say that I've ever seen it even. Like many of the wines in this list, this does well in cooler climates, uh, more so than the Vitis vinifera. Grape growers have found that. Uh, the vine grows similarly to that of its grandparent, Sauvignon Blanc. And this was originally created uh, at the University of Davis, California in 2001. Uh, so it's been around for 22 years now. La Crescent. This is a one that's uh, from the University of Minnesota, created in 2002, and it was actually named after a town in Minnesota, so that might be, oh, that's why I've heard that name, 
uh, it's uh, most of the cultivated by the University of Minnesota are cold tolerant because they are at the area where it is cold tolerant. Uh, the uh, wine is usually best made in a dry style. Uh, it's used to make a sweeter off dry wines, but I don't know, the ones I've had have been dry on the La Crescent. I don't recall having any of them that were sweet. But this says here that when they are made in a sweeter or off-dry style, they don't hold the acidity, which makes it feel, well, they say, flabby and uninteresting. So, uh I don't know. I've, I've never had it in that style. I've always had it in dry uh, so it does give you flavors, notes of tropical fruits and stone fruits like peaches and nectarines. So sounds good. Uh, Baco Noir, B A C O N O I R. Uh, this is uh, a breed that within the last few decades in the U.S., uh, uh, but it's not. Uh, this one, the Bacchanor, has been around for a long time. Uh, Francis Bacchel was trying to create a phylloxera-resistant plant that could revive Europeans' pandemic-struck vineyards. Uh, it has a subnote here that phylloxera that affects grapevines all but destroyed European wine production in the mid-1800s. Since American wines, uh, vines were resistant to the disease, Bacco thought that inbreeding a French-American hybrid could solve the phylloxera problem. And it was grown for some time in France, but now only in North America. It was created back in 1894. Uh, a North, uh, North American grape that is, is from 1894. Wow. It's grown almost predominantly in New York State and Ontario, but it can be found throughout, well, North America, uh, similar to a Pinot Noir, but with bright acid and a lighter body. So the Baco Noir, I've had that before. It's just a pleasant wine. Number 12, Catawba. C-A-T-A-W-B-A. If you're looking for a hybrid that has a history attached, then Catawba is your choice. It's one of the first hybrid grapes used for wine production in the U.S. And uh, Nicholas Longworth used the Catawba grapes to make sparkling wine in Ohio starting in 1813. Uh, first icons of American winemaking. However, Longworth's Catawba vines didn't last forever. And in 1860, they fell victim to disease that wiped them out. And it doesn't say what disease. That would be interesting to know. Catawba is largely used to make still rosé wines that's not dissimilar to white Zinfandel. It also can be used to make sparkling wines. Uh, although the Catawba, being a Native American grape, is often described as foxy. Uh, uh, <laughs> animal-like characteristics. No, it doesn't. You know, animal-like. I, that I, I, that is a very poor description of fox. I think animal-like characteristics. What what wine has animal-like characteristics? I like to describe foxy as a foxtail going through your mouth. You get this type taste in your mouth that you. That's foxy to me. Uh, animal-like characteristics. What is an animal-like characteristic? Is it a skunk or is it a beaver or is it a buffalo? I, I, that's very poor, I think, there. Uh, not everybody likes that foxy taste, too. I mean, it's it's a, a the bane of American grape is the foxiness that it comes up with. And... Uh, again, for disclosure, I'm not a fan of it. I, I just don't like the 
the foxiness that these grapes throw out. It's uh, not my greatest of taste experiences. Chardonnay. Chardonnay was first created in the early 1950s at Cornell University, but it wasn't until the 1960s that it was started to be used in vineyards around uh, the country. And again, the name pretty much tells you uh, that it's pretty close to the Chardonnay. Uh, Chardonnay is spelled C-H-A-R-D-O-N-E-L, and Chardonnay C-H-A-R-D-O-N-N-A-Y. So, you know, very, very close. Uh, Chardonnay has green apple nose to it, which I always pick up in a Chardonnay, and the Chardonnay tends to do that too. Um, it's a refreshing wine. It's high acid, a little crisp. Uh, good warm weather wine because it just it awakens your taste buds. A uh, nice wine to have with certain foods. Uh, it's uh, usually a little bit darker and more amber amber in color than a Chardonnay. Chardonnays tend to be lighter. Uh, the Chardonnay is found. Central United States, and, and I say central, uh, Arkansas, Missouri, Michigan, Iowa, uh, edge of Kansas, uh, places like that. You'll find it right down that strip of uh, the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, also, it's grown in Argentina, Spain, and Italy, which seems funny, but it's uh, uh, I never saw one from... In a, in a bottle of wine from those countries, so I don't know. Next one, Vignole, V-I-G-N-O-L-E-S. Uh, nobody really knows where this white grape came from. Uh, genetic testing revealed that the grape experts thought was were no parents were actually completely unrelated. Uh, they're hardy grapes, which means they can stay on the vine for weeks after many others, and they're used to make Sweet ice wines. Uh, they also are very good as a dry and semi-sweet wine. And that's what the appeal is to this particular grape because it is uh, quite versatile. It can be uh, used in all sorts of different styles. And it stays on the vine well to leave it so that it can be a ice wine uh, because of the, well, you need that long hang time. Uh, it says, depending where it's grown and how it's grown, which is all factors, uh, the wines can have flavors of orange blossom, chamomile tea, or peach, or tropical notes of pineapple and grapefruit. Uh, and unlike most hybrid grapes, it's possible to age vanilla in oak, giving it a heavier, substantial flavor profile as opposed to most hybrids, which do not take well to oak, except for a couple of them I've read there. Take a sip. Okay. Chancellor. C-H-A-N-C-E-L-L-O-R. Chancellor. Though some wine experts believe the most hybrid Grapes make less than impressive wine. It is pretty much agreed that the Chancellor is among the better hybrid grapes you can use to make wine. It produces notes of red fruit, and it can be aged. Uh, while it can be uh, vinified on its own, it's often used for blending with uh, Vitus vinifera varieties like Merlot. Uh, it was originally bred in France by an Albury Sabelle, but it's banned by French law or European laws, so it can't be grown in France anymore. Uh, so it's quite difficult to find winemakers producing Chancellor in any meaningful way in France. It's, they might have some that they just grow just for kicks, but otherwise it's not. But it has caught on fire here in the United States, and particularly in New York State. 
uh, it's used in a lot of experimental wines in New York State, uh, different styles and different blends and stuff like that. Uh, it is a cold weather grape, and it grows well in Michigan, Illinois, and uh, Iowa and different areas that are custom to the cold. And number 16, Marisol Foch, M-A-R-E with a little mark above the E, C-H-A-L, Foch, F-O-C-H. This is a hybrid beginning back in France in 1910. Uh, it was bred by a Eugene Coleman, uh, but the uh, uh, Marshall Foch got its start really in the United States in the 1940s, where growers in New York and Minnesota were able to get a lot of success with it because of its hardiness to the cold. Canadian growers have picked it up, and they have embraced the grape, and now it's grown in all sorts of parts of Canada, particularly Quebec and Nova Scotia. It's known for the fact that it's reliably produces very deeply colored, jammy wines. And on its own, it gives you a dark, rich wine with displays of black fruit. Uh, it also can be used for blending to uh, add to lighter colored wines to make them darker. Uh, and it says here, last line, however, some winemakers employ carbonic maceration a type of grape pressing that produces lighter wines with cherry notes. So there you go. There are 16 hybrids that you really should, and that's that's a good step into the fact that I'm going to be getting a hold of uh, these guys that talked about American wines and American grapes and how they've grown. So keep those in mind, and I'm sure we'll be revisiting those names as we go through uh, the uh, talking with those uh, let's see where are some their names I had their names here and I what the heck to do with them I don't know how Mike does it Mike's got stuff spread out all over his desk and everything he can find everything I got about five things and I have trouble finding any of them uh, Jerry and Tom is the two I'm trying to find. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, and let me see. Oh, this, yes. We talked. Let's see, where is it? Oh, there it is. We talked. Oh, geez. How long ago was it, Mike? I can't recall. But we talked about paper bottles, paper boy. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, uh, don't. Yeah, I'm like everybody. The, the pandemic steps in there, and it just sort of like wipes out a year and a half, all of 2020 and then a little bit of either side of it. And it threw my mind off of when things were discussed. And so I can't remember if it was just a couple years ago, if it was four years ago or longer, but it, we talked about paper boy, uh, which was a bottle made out of paper, all of paper. And, uh, it was coated and lighter and thing. Let's see. Let me, I'm curious if I punch in paper boy. Boy. I don't know if it gives me anything there. Yes, the images for paper boy wine. Yes, it does. Uh, paper boy wine packaging. Uh, this. Well, this shows 2012. And it just shows that it doesn't show much at all on this either. Uh, but it has a vintage weight of 2012. 
Paperboy is about as green as a wine bottle can get. It's made out of compressed, recycled paper and printed with natural inks. Inside the bottle, there is a recyclable sleeve, just like you'd find in a box of wine. But unlike box wines, these bottles are rigid and strong enough to be plunged in a bucket of ice Excuse me for three hours. Producing paperboy bottles requires a mere 15% of the energy that it takes to make regular glass bottles, and they weigh only an ounce when empty. Wow, an ounce? Which saves a huge amount of energy in shipping. But, and it doesn't, the wine bottles by Stranger and Stranger take less than 85% energy than making glass bottles. But Paperboy, and we saw that, and we talked about it, and we thought, all right. I mean, this is, sounds like a pretty cool thing here. And then, boom, that was the end of it. We never saw anything else, and it just sort of disappeared. And first paper wine bottle, yeah, there's quite a bit here. You can check on your search engine, Paperboy wine bottle, and it shows you the images of it and tells you about it and all that. Uh, wine bottle idea of Paperboy wine. But the reason I thought about that was because I found this article out of Wine Industry Network, the advisor, the wine and the win advisor. It says the paper bottle revolution lands stateside. Now, this is dated May the 26th. So this is just a couple of weeks ago. California wineries will now be able to use the world's first and only commercially available paper bottle for wines and spirits, thanks to a partnership with King City's Monterey Wine Company and British Sustainable Packaging from Frugal Pack. Now, if they're saying this is the first available, but Paperboy was done back 10 years ago. Which really, hmm. The Monterey Wine Company, a California custom production facility, has agreed to see the Frugal Pack become the first U.S. filler for con for the contract filling <coughs> me, of frugal bottles and wines. And made with 94% recycled paperboard. <coughs> Excuse me again. The frugal bottles are made from 94% recycled paperboard with a food-grade pouch and weighing just 83 grams before filling. This means there's a carbon footprint six times lower than glass bottles. They also offer 360-degree branding for uh, the bottle. Now, Paperboy, let me click back on this. Paperboy wine bottle and this. Compress recycled paper. Uh, they weigh only an ounce when empty. Uh, in Safeway now and available nationwide soon. And this article was written in 2013. 11 for November 4, 2013. And it said that they were available in Safeway at the time and across the nation soon. That's almost 10 years ago. And the 2012 Apostle Ropel's bottle. And it tells you how to take out the liner, how to open it up and take out the liner and recycle the paper in the liner. And 
we never saw it around the country. We were looking for it. In fact, I requested anyone see it uh, then to be sure to let me know about it or even send me a bottle. Never received any. I don't think anybody saw any out there at all. It was just it's so rare. And now we're, I'm, I'm seeing this article here, I'd like to say just a couple of weeks old, that this MWC is based in the U.S. heart of the wine production country in central coast of California. And uh, it's within 200 mile radius of all of California's main Appalachians. And the frugal bottle is developing a growing following in the North American market. Uh, so America is already selling drinks in the paper bottle with Signal 7 wines, Demon Spirits rum, and Half Shell Vodka. More than 32 different drink producers from around the world have launched 100 different screws of wine, spirits, and olive oils in the frugal bottle. And they are available in Japan, North America, the United Kingdom, across Europe, Scandinavia, Australia, and South Africa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to see. Do they have an email address on this? Yes, they do. Monterey Wine Company. There it is. And the Frugal Pack. Frugal Pack? Yeah, Frugal Pack. I'm going to email these people and say, did you buy out the paper boy and see if they respond to me or if they try to hush me up and I just disappear? Uh, hmm. Because here they're talking about this frugal pack that has, secure, uh, has secured 17.5 million pounds of funding, and that's British pounds. And that's 6.5 million since 2019 uh, pounds. At a time when British businesses were struggling and funding was in short supply, this young company secured substantial funding because it's already been established. Now, you think about that? Uh, it says, it is due to launch a range of other frugal pack products, including a frugal cup for foods such as noodles, porridge, uh, yogurt, and ice cream. Yogurt. Yo yogurt. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is British written here. Yogurt. Spelled Y-O-G-H-U-R-T. Yogurt. Uh, I wonder if the United States is the one that destroys it or if they destroy it. It says about the frugal bottle is lighter. The frugal bottle weighs just 83 grams, so it's up to five times lighter, easier to transport, easier to carry. It's better for the environment. An independent life cycle analysis found the frugal bottle, which is made from recycled paperboard with no chemicals, has a carbon footprint up to six times lower than glass bottles and more than a third less than a bottle made from 100% recycled plastic. The frugal bottle's water footprint is also at least four times lower than glass. It is easy to recycle. Simply separate the plastic food grade pouch from the plastic paper bottle and put them in your respective recycling bins. The food pouch is certified recyclable and the polyethylene metallicized polyester laminate, the same material used in bag and box wines. But those aren't recyclable, so I don't see how you're saying recycle. It also uses less plastic than a plastic bottle. Use up to 77% less plastic. Only 15 grams compared to 64 grams bottle made from 100% recycled. Uh, it stands out as the frugal bottle is made from recycled paperboard allows for a 360-degree branding across the bottle. No other wine or spirits bottle looks or feels like it, so it stands out on the shelf. And it's better for wine producers. The frugal bottle can be produced in the heart of their bottling facility 
offers complete freedom on design and print, is more cost-effective to transport than glass bottles while reducing the carbon footprint. You know, that's that's a good thing, though. You're saving, I don't know how much it costs, I'm sure, to have bottles made and have it, the label made, I, I guess. I don't know how that's formed, how it's done uh, around the bottle. That would be interesting. They had the pouch on the inside and the papers wound around it, I guess. I don't know. And then the outer layer is the is the label. So I guess if you ordered bottles through them, it would be a lot cheaper because you don't have to... It would be cheaper all the way around. It, I mean, if... I used to get some bottles from California and, and Texas and different places, and the shipping cost was outrageous. I mean, the bottles from California, after I bought bottles from California and had them shipped here, it was just about the same cost as buying bottles here, which are a lot expensive, a lot more expensive for some reason. So, But then I found cheaper source here, and so that was better. But if you can get paper bottles from California already labeled, then that would save you the cost of labels. And labels can get quite expensive, too. I mean, you would be amazed. And also a lot easier than having to label everything because we used to do it by hand or by a little one-bottle-at-a-time machine. And we didn't have a great big laboring machine we do it one at a time and it you know time consuming and cost and if it was already on the bottles then you can just fill them up and you know stick a cork in them i guess cork or screw cap or whatever they use and they'd be all set to go and again the cost would be so much cheaper all the way around so that would be a good deal uh you know i think it would be an excellent deal to go paper bottles like that. Uh, so, frugal bottles. I will look that up. This has really got me curious, though. Why all of a sudden we have this? Wow, we got something new. Look at this. They just made this. No, they didn't. This has been around for 10 years or more uh, Paperboy has been around for a long time. So, uh, I'll check on that. I'll let you know next week uh, what they what I come up with on that because Paperboy has been around for a lot longer than what they're giving credit for for this one. Paper Bottle Revolution lands stateside, it says. Hell hits vineyards in Provence, France. And, I mean, already green and coming out, vineyards in the region were recovering from the serious drought conditions, and then they got serious thunderstorms and hell storms, and it knocked a lot of leaves off. I don't think they were getting... Um... I don't think they got bud break. Let me know. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Uh, no, no issues or major losses. But uh, the uh, they're saying that this is not a hell prone area. Never seen hell in the area that was hit. Uh, and uh, they said some of the vines were affected to varying degrees, but uh, uh, some of the vines had no leaves left. Uh, they the hail just knocked all the all the leaves off the vines. That's not a good thing. That could affect a harvest. Uh, so uh, let's see. 90% right in the heart of the hell quarter to around 20% in the neighboring areas would, would have affected. So, 
serious stuff there. That that happened a month ago. Uh, where's the date on this? Uh, not quite a month ago. So, you know, that's serious stuff there. So, all right. I think I'm done for the night. We got to talk about some some uh, American grapes, which I will leave myself a note and put this right on top so I can contact Jerry and Tom and see if we can't get one or both of those on the show and talk about American grapes. So, uh, and Paperboy wine and new paper bottles. That really... I mean, not not that I'm trying to stand up for Paperboy Wine. It's just that, you know, I broke the news here, and then all of a sudden it just disappeared. Although when I talked to, uh, oh, geez, I can't think of his name, the distributor from uh, Southern Wine and Spirits, uh, I mentioned Paperboy to him, and he goes, oh, yeah. So he is familiar with it. Either that or he's familiar with the new incarnation of it. I don't know. Yeah. It's got me curious now all the way around. So. Uh, okay. Wow. Uh, any, uh, anything else uh, to add to that? I, I couldn't find, uh, I was trying to look up some other things on here about it, but uh, the the past show, unless it was a, the complete topic, um, like the, you know, the. Yeah, we don't have it. It's not a list. We just talk but, about it for a while, and then we move on. Yeah. But it, it was a while back. I mean, it's, yeah. Um, that's It was. Yeah, it yeah. was It was quite some time ago. Yeah. yeah. And now, there's, now they're acting like it's a new thing or something, so it doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of strange. I know. Um, uh, tomorrow, the uh, automobile has been invented. Uh, it has uh, four wheels on it. Uh, you can uh, You can steer around and uh, actually go places yeah. mm-hmm. so uh welcome to the automobile and, go and it's gas uh, gas gas powered yeah. it'll uh, appear uh, tomorrow uh it'll debut tomorrow and uh people have fun with it so <laughs> good luck i mean i don't know i know like you mentioned 2013 uh, you know 2013 almost uh 10 years ago Paperboy came out and it's like almost. oh here's a new thing unless okay is it a maybe it's a different mm construction of it i don't know uh, I, it I just, doesn't look like it it yeah. looks like the exact same thing because we can look up paperboy wine and look up uh the well uh, paper bottles yeah the paperboy wine the construction of it i mean they show pictures of it uh the the design and everything mm-hmm. and the paper bottles and they look almost exactly the same i don't wow. see any variation from it at all mm-hmm. and yet they're giving yeah, it looks like screw caps on that. Yeah. And they're giving all this credit to uh, Frugal Pack. Yeah. And yet, uh, let's see, was it Frugal Pack that did this years ago? Paperboy Wine, who did this? Wine and Champagne Packaging. Uh, California Square Stranger and Stranger introduces Paperboy. Okay. Following the success of this year's Dye Line Award-winning Safeway Wine Bottle Sleeve and their recent release, California Square, Stranger and Stranger, introduces the Paperboy, a wine bottle made out of compressed, recycled paper. You know, so... It's a different company, complete designed by Stranger and Stranger... And, but it's just, it's basically the same thing I'm seeing on pictures of, you know, on pictures of the, the, the new revolution of these things. Let's see. Monterey. The Frugal Pack Company. Let me click on their website. Uh, Frugal Pack is completely different. Frugal Bottle. Meet the Frugal Bottle. It looks just like the Paperboy Bottle. Just like it. 
Hmm. Interesting. Well. And it says the world's first paper, wine, and spirits model. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Since launching in 2020, June 2020, the first wine in a frugal bottle from Cantina Gozia proved to be so popular it completely sold out twice. Yeah, I mean, 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Or eight years ago, if they launched in 2020, I don't know. This has really got me confused. I'm gonna have to write some emails and see what type of response I get. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe have a frugal pack on the on the show or something, or or the other one. See what's going on. Um, yeah. There you go. That's an idea. Um, I'll contact Frugal Pack and see what they see what they have to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So well, there you go. Uh, so, we are about that time. We are done. Sorry about no guest tonight. She was sick, but hey, we we can't control that. And yeah, and hope, hope she's better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you did a another amazing job. Uh, just you know, spur of the moment type of thing. It's, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, you thanks. And speaking <laughs> of speaking of uh, applause, don't forget to tune in to Flight Line Radio. Ooh. Thank you. Tomorrow night. That's tomorrow. Uh, from uh, well, you can tune into it any time. I actually, it's it's a twenty four hour streaming uh, internet radio service, and they play a little bit of everything. So you're not just stuck in one gender. You can just uh, just about everything on there. But Mike is live on it from seven to nine. Yeah. on Friday nights, except last Friday night. Last and Friday. You weren't I, there. Yeah, I had some issues on this thing. And I right before the show uh, popped up, it said, oh, you have a Windows update. Well, that's the problem from last time. And it, it wanted me to restart before the show started tonight. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to because it's a horror story. And um, I got through it, but it was too late. And I was like, you know, it's it was after 8 o'clock. And I thought, what am I going to do between, you know, 8.15, 8.30 to 9 o'clock, play, you know, three or four songs, and that's it. I just, I bugged out. But uh, the, you know, the rebooting and, you know, the, the updates and stuff, and, and it just didn't it didn't go as planned. And, and, I, and I see it now. Your device needs to restart to install updates. No, just stop doing that. <laughs> I'll update when well, I, yeah, I, I tuned in, after. and oh, you weren't there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, between songs and between stuff and yeah. and i yeah. thought well okay you you know maybe had to <laughs> sit down for dinner or something <laughs> oh and, right <laughs> and Just let it go <laughs> and so i didn't think anything of it but then you know it got on to the second hour and i'm yeah. not hearing from you and I, i'm going yeah, well where is he and so yeah. i sent out a note to you and you never respond. And yeah. I even said hey you're not coming through on the air because i thought maybe there was an issue there too yeah. so, Nope, it was an issue. It was a, a stupid uh, computer this time. But uh, well, we're getting it, getting that one fixed finally. But uh, now it wants to do something again. I got my video driver wants to update. The Windows wants to update. It's just I don't know. Um, Gee. Ridiculous. Uh, take a chance every time. That, every time it shuts off. But um, oh, I know. Well, I know. We we do on this too. And yeah. Block talk radio is the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every every time we get on, we're taking a chance. That's going to give us the, our full hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's right. But tune in tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, thank you. On flightlineradio.com and make requests and listen to Mike. He yeah. should be there tomorrow. Oh, should and be there. you yeah. can always, if you're playing with your computer, put him on the background. And just listen to him while you're doing other stuff on the computer because you can yeah. do that too. So. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. There's a there's an app. There's the Live 365 app. I'm on. Uh, that all the live 365 stations are on, but you can find us there. And I've actually hooked my phone up to the car and listened to it uh, on the way home from or in, and going to work, going to and from. But it's only oh, like a, okay. it's only like a 10 minute drive. It doesn't make that big a difference. But you know, I listen to it and see how yeah. how it sounds and the music it's playing. I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty good. All right, and then I get home and that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, you can I listen to it mobile and get on there. So. Uh, does it stay? It's a 24, 24 7 yeah. you know, streaming. So, yeah. you know, if anybody just wants to have it in the background, you can do that at any time. So, yeah, thank you. Yep. And um, keep, 
keep that in mind. Thank you. Um, and our next show yeah. will be uh, June 29th. That's uh, next Thursday, 7 p.m. To Oh, see, there. what is this now? An update available. There's an update available. I know that. Uh, next Thursday, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's like reboot now, reboot now. Um, yeah, watch if you disappear then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, and I um, uh, appreciate it. Have a good uh, weekend and a, a safe uh, and happy week and weekend ahead. And uh, we'll see you all next Thursday right here on uh, Blog Talk Radio and all the other places we're at. <laughs> thank you. Have Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Be safe. This concludes tonight's broadcast of All About Wine with your host, Ron. For show information, links to All About Wine on Twitter and Facebook, or to be a guest on this show, visit the show website at www.allaboutwinebtr.com. Archived shows are available for download on iTunes or on our show page at blogtalkradio.com forward slash allaboutwine. Thank you for listening. Drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time on All About Wine. And that's it.